Sales funnels, ad funnels, marketing funnels, one funnel, two funnel, red funnel, blue funnel. What the heck is all of this stuff? And more importantly, why should you care? See, this topic can get a little confusing sometimes because people use the word funnel in so many different ways. Some people use the word funnel to refer to their website or some sort of set of landing pages. And other people use the word funnel to describe their strategy to increase things like their email opt-ins. And some don't use the word funnel at all because they just flat out don't have one. But regardless, of where you sit, the term funnel feels like it's become incredibly complicated. So what I'm doing here today is simplifying the most fail-safe sales funnel that drives revenue for every business every time so that you know exactly what it is and how you can implement it on your own today. But first, real quick, my name is Tristan with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency that helps small businesses grow. Like I said, today I'm going to fully explain what sales funnels are, go over all the elements of different types of sales funnels, and everything you need to know to begin creating your own revenue-driving sales funnel. I'll start with this. If you do not get your sales funnel down to a science, you risk the potential growth of your business. We talk to business owners every single day, and the one thing that almost every single one has in common is their end goal, which is sales. But interestingly enough, a lot of them don't have sales funnels, or in other words, they don't have a clearly defined process to increase sales in their business. You see, most of the time they rely on things like word of mouth or referrals. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not a bad thing, not at all. Because if your business is exclusively growing through word of mouth and referrals, then we know that you have a great product or service that people truly enjoy. Like if people were advocating for you or what you do, then clearly this means your business has a proof of concept and it is a viable business. But on the other hand, without a sales funnel in place, you're essentially operating your business without any predictable engine to generate more sales for you. And when you run a business like this, you really have no predictability for the future. You don't really know if you're going to have customers or not, or whether or not you'll even have work for your employees. And this presents a significant business risk because without a sales funnel in place, selling becomes very challenging and sales become few and far between at best. So to mitigate this risk, let's break down sales funnels to its core and give you the essentials that you need in order to get started. Sound good? Okay, so what are sales funnels? Well, a sales funnel is just a fancy way of describing the journey a customer takes in order to purchase your products or your services. The simplest way to understand sales funnels is to just look at like a funnel, like an actual physical funnel. Typically, they are wide at the top and get narrow towards the bottom. Now, if we add sales to the front of the word funnel, then this process now refers to channeling consumers into buying customers. Just replace the liquid substances with actual people and the end goal being them buying from you. Now, the higher people are in your sales funnel, the less likely they are to buy from you. These are normally people who are simply aware of your business or interested in a topic that is related to your business. And then the lower people go in your funnel, the more likely they are to buy from you. These are people who are specifically interested in buying your product or your services. And it's important that you understand this because what this really means for sales funnels is that only a small percentage of people who enter your funnel will actually end up buying from you. It's not like you cast a wide net and then everybody that was at the top of the funnel is gonna convert. Again, only a small percentage of people who actually enter your funnel will actually buy your products or your services. So in order to increase your sales, not only do you need to have a sales funnel in place, but you also need to have enough volume of people in your sales funnel to start converting to sales. You see, the more people you have in your sales funnel, the more likely you are to convert new customers. And when people aren't really seeing sales, it's usually because either A, they don't have a strong sales funnel to begin with, or B, they don't have enough people in their sales funnel to start converting. So now that you know what sales funnels are, let's talk about these steps inside of sales funnels. There are generally four basic steps inside of any sales funnel awareness, engagement, conversion, and advocacy. So people must first be aware of your business to even consider buying from your business at any point in their life. You can increase your awareness by things like SEO, which is search engine optimization, content marketing, digital advertising, and so on. Now, this is gonna look different for every business and every niche. Like a business that sells candles will probably do better on Pinterest than a business that collects trash. However, somebody that collects trash might have a better time getting leads from PPC ads than somebody who owns a candle business because it's a less saturated market. So for this, do some outreach and figure out where your audience is, see where your competitors are doing well, and go wherever that attention is. Next, you'll want to engage people who are already aware of your business. This is important because engagement builds trust, credibility, and positive emotional triggers that ultimately influence people to buy from your business. You can increase your engagement by giving value to your audience. This is most commonly done through content creation like videos, blogs, email marketing, social media, really anything that can help your audience. This value exchange of I 
give you value for free helps them move down your funnel. And then after that is conversion. And so this is where you can actually start selling to people who are actively engaged with your business. And odds are you'll have a better chance at converting this group of people than the complete strangers because engaged users have higher conversion rates than unaware, unengaged audiences. You can convert your engaged audiences through email marketing, retargeting ads, and through your website. And then lastly, you have advocacy, which is when your products or your services are so good that your customers become advocates of your brand, ultimately resulting in more word of mouth and awareness for your business. So that's a basic sales funnel. You follow me so far? Good. So now let's talk about how pricing comes into play. Now, typically, the more inexpensive your products are, the less steps you need in order to motivate people to actually buy your product. As a general rule of thumb for you to keep in mind, the more your product or service costs, the more value you're going to have to create in order to motivate people to buy from you. In addition, your sales cycle and the time it takes people to buy your products or services is also very important. If it takes a long time for people to buy your product, then you'll likely need to add that time lapse into your sales funnel and plan to communicate with your leads during that time period. For example, we have a client that sells trucks to landscape contractors. He has trucks that cost tens of thousands of dollars, and as a result, he knows that it's going to take a ton of time to convert any of his leads into customers. So over the last two or three years, we've run Google ads, social ads, and put other organic strategies into play to increase the leads that he receives. Once he receives a lead from us, his team speaks to them, but they already know that the deal won't close on the first call because that's the nature of a high ticket item. So instead of getting down on himself, he continues to send emails over the years to stay in front of them, stay top of mind. And the best part of it is it's all automated anyway. When you create your sales funnel, start with thinking about your customer's journey. Think about what makes them interested in your products or your services, what obstacles deter them from buying from you, as well as the time it's going to take for them to overcome these buying resistances. When you craft your sales funnel with all of this in mind, you increase your odds of success. It's really more psychology than anything. You really need to understand what's going on in your customer's mind at every stage of the funnel. And when understood and implemented successfully, then you will have a predictable system to increase your sales. Now, let's talk about what you need in order to start building your sales funnel. You need to start by mapping all of this stuff out. You need to figure out what your top of funnel strategies are gonna be, how you'll engage with your aware customers, and then ultimately convert them. The second thing you need to do is start creating landing pages. Now, there are a ton of landing page tools out there, but the most common ones are lead pages, click funnels, Kartra, and WordPress. Now, the third thing you need to do is to start creating content. This includes, but is not limited to things like posting content on your blog, social media pages, landing pages, and email campaigns. Now, to be honest, for a lot of businesses, this is the hard part. But that being said, it is the most important part because without great content, you'll be much less successful when it comes to moving people down your funnel. And then finally, you need traffic to make all of this work. Use SEO, social media, email marketing, digital advertising, anything you can to get in front of the right people. Like I said earlier, most people fail at increasing their sales simply because they don't have enough people inside their sales funnel. So to mitigate that, build a healthy amount of people in your sales pipeline and tweak your sales funnel as time goes on to have the best chance at increasing your sales. So, so far we have defined what a sales funnel is. We defined the steps that every sales funnel should take. We discussed how to customize your sales funnel and why a sales funnel is important. Now, something that a ton of businesses do is create a lead magnet as a way to get people into their funnels. A lead magnet is a free piece of content or something valuable that a business gives away to a potential customer in exchange for like their name, their email address, or their phone number, just like their contact information. And these lead magnets are an incredible way to get customers into your funnel and immediately move them into the engagement stage because you were immediately able to hook them in with your free value. And since you have their email address and their name, you can start marketing to them immediately. So if you want to learn how to build a lead magnet that converts, be sure to watch this video right here.